kid. Miss, I'm Mr. Faraday's substitute since his day's trial. Therefore, I insist that you update me on the situation. I can't back down from here. I have to. I have a right to know. Do I need to teach you a thing or two about how to talk to adults, kid? Is he threatening me? Is he go is he going for his gun? It's just a mirror. How dare he trick me like that? Faraday was stabbed to death with some kind of blade. And he has a gun in his hand. The other man, Mr. Mackerel, was shot and killed. He was found holding a body in his, a bloody knife. In his hand. Was there anyone else who wants him to defend in lobby number two? Yeah, that big lug over there. His name's Gumption. He was in charge of guarding the place. He's claiming that no one else entered the room. If that's the case, then they must have killed each other, correct? Maybe. Such impudence! This guy, this guy is really testing my patience. Why was I? Why was I not informed that you were going to testify in court? Homicides are my only gig. You have to cross the cases also on my assignments. Hmm. So you were called upon to comment on the Yatsugarasu's characteristics in order to assess if Mr. Faraday really was the Yatsugarasu or not. Well, well. Looks like you just might be have a brain after after in all of that head of yours, son. Son? Son? I'm not your son, Pops. Well, I guess we can talk to you over here. Hey, you! Do you have a minute? You know, I really... I'm, I'm not really into talking to people I don't know. Especially at a time like this. Ugh, I apologize for not introducing myself before bothering you. My name is Miles Edra. I was to take the place of Mr. Faraday in, co in court today. Edgeworth, huh? I've never heard of you. So Faraday substitute is a newbie, huh? I'll have you know, madam, that I'm that I study now under Manfred von Koma. Don't take me for some naive novice. Don't take me for some naive novice. <laughs> Are you some kind of student of Von Karma? Yeah, I, I should. <laughs> Those clothes are a dead giveaway. <laughs> Stop right there. Then, then, these are the garments of one who gallantly presents the facts. <laughs> Oh, thanks for the great laugh. But I... But try not to make me laugh so much, okay? I wasn't trying to do anything of this sort. <laughs> just kidding. I was, I was just goofing around. By the way, do you know who I am? My name is Costo Yu. And if you're telling me the truth, then we're about to go head and head in court. Ah, but of course. I've heard much about you, Miss You. <laughs> it's been, but of course, I've heard mu uh, much about you. <laughs> You're a regular Shakespeare. Did I say something funny? 
in the, the page and miss you. Her Japanese name is Hamiko Kazura. In well, her first name in English comes from Greek mythology. Probably. And they uh, use a uh, kind of trees. Pretty much found in graveyards. Amiko? Um. Amiko is like a royalty kind of name, I guess. And Kazura is crow, just like Kazura might be from Karasu from crow, just like Mr. Faraday. <clears throat> anyway, I like I like you to update me on the situation. I really don't know anything. Why don't you try talking to the, those detectives over there? If that were the case, then why are you here? <laughs> uh, what's so funny? Just the way you speak is so tactless. The only person I'm going to assist in, in court and, until only a little while ago was just murdered. It's not like I want to go back in, into the courtroom pretending that as though nothing happened. That's a good point. I apologize for asking such an insensitive question. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And uh, let's talk to Gumshoe over here. And do you all? Who, me? Hey, pal. It's a common courtesy to tell someone your first name before asking theirs. Nah, point taken. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I'm a district prosecutor. Prosecutor? I have seen... I've never seen a prosecutor as young as you, pal. I told you my name. Now, would you mind telling me yours? Detective Gumshoe! And my... And just recently, I've achieved my dream of being a detective. More than a dream. It was what I was born to do. Wait. Maybe I should check and make sure that I'm not in some crazy dream voice. This detective is entirely too excited to be at a murder scene. Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling me what you know about the incident? You know what? You know I don't have to do tell you anything, right? I know that. But it would be behoove you to fill me in on what you know. Wow! You're a proud one for such a young state, aren't you? Well, anyway, Detective Bad is the one in charge. So you're just gonna have to get, ask him all the details, okay? Yes, for me, I was got in the door to defendant lobby number two. Hmm. So you were got. So you were on the guard detail. Did you notice anything strange while you were on duty? Well, I freaked out when I heard a gunshot. Then I kind of froze. You're a detective, and you need. And the easily gunshot scared you that much? Then again, I, I can hardly claim to not to know what it's like to hear it when at close range. Then Detective Bad came running into the scene. He went, we went into lobby number two together, and both men were lying there, dead. Is that everything? Hmm. Yeah, that's it. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. Interesting. Other than the gunshots, did, did he hear 
single sound. He didn't hear a single sound of commotion. Detective Gumshoe's testimony. Jotted down in my organizer. Miss you! There's someone here who wishes to see you. Who is it? The Coracopian Embassy staff member by the name of Manny Cochin. What? What's going on? Detective Bad and Miss Mew's moves just changed all of a sudden. Wait a second. Wasn't Manny Cochin? I'll be right there. It's nice to see you again, Miss You. Why are you here? I have no desire to see you ever again. I have no. That was Miss You's line, I'm sorry. Now, no. Actually, would you mind stepping outside for a brief chat? Fine, let's go. What are you doing here, Manfred? Tired of waiting for me in the lobby? Bad! Fun karma. It's been a long time. I knew you would show up. You usually do when the young two glasses involved. I see these cases no exception. Do you know Detective Bad, sir? Yes. He's like an old bloodhound that, that never leaves the scene of a crime. If only he would get a promotion and move on. It's the crime scene that where a detective is most useful and effective. Huh. It's not like I don't know that. We've been on so bad. That that man that I just passed by. He was not the suspect from the was he not the suspect from the KG8 incident? I was right. Just, just what is a man, that man doing, wandering around here? That's Verde. I can't believe it. He's that such a lie, such an easily, easy cash get away, imbecile. I would have proved his guilt in three minutes. Von Karma, I think you said enough for now. In poor taste to speak. It's in poor taste to speak like that about the departing. Huh. Hmm. Very well. Back to the top. Back on topic. I place an ad to where I think in charge of the investigation here. And there is a little frenzy. Uh, how can you play see me in charge? Francisco, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I'm here for a summer vacation. That's us. Francisco von Karma. So she is here on vacation from Germany. <clears throat> Sorry. I had something in my throat. She is the daughter of Madfred von Karma, and a student of his, who is also a junior to me. You are the one who, who's junior to me, and don't you forget it! You're not conveniently avoid. You're not conveniently avoiding the bar examination, are you? <laughs> if you were able to, if you were able to pass. Then I have absolutely no trouble at all. I will never allow myself to lose to you. Never! Then why does she always have to be this competitive? Anyway, Papa. You're... <coughs> Sorry. You're already assigning Miles Edgeworth to cover this, this case? Yes, I am. Why do you ask? Then 